Hi, good morning and welcome to today's products in focus. So last night we had the FOMC meeting um, where they basically gave an indication that there would be an interest rate hike in 2015, not necessarily in September, they didn't uh, specifically uh, highlight that, that date, but they did say that it's not so important the, the first hike is the trajectory of future hikes uh, and basically a, a lot of traders have taken that the fact that they will they probably will have this hike in 2015 um, but uh, the the kind of the trajectory of the future uh, hikes will not be that aggressive so the dollar is kind of really taking a bit of a back seat uh, sterling is smashing it just now uh, the euro's recovered and obviously dollar yen has dropped down a fair bit and uh, what that's done is also had a highlight that the American economy, while doing okay, there are a number of risks to the uh, potential growth in the future, and that the FOMC were kind of revising down some of their growth for forecasts for 2015, 2016, uh, and that's why you're getting this kind of doji formation here on the US theory. It was an okay statement. It didn't say that it had a huge, unbelievable confidence in the US economy. Things were looking okay, uh, but they could be better. And um, You've, you've seen that impact on the US dollar when we look at the FX pairs there, and this is where we set with the US 30. So in between two ranges, still got that death cross on moving averages, all of the technical indicators are relatively neutral, with 17,747 being support and 18,12 being potential resistance. So then looking at the UK 100, it reacted kind of a little bit negatively. Also that sterling strength should start impacting some of the um, support or resistance levels to start impacting the strength of the UK 100. And as you can see there, we've broken through potential support at 66.86, now eyeing up 65.89. And that's almost a bearish engulfing pattern that we've got in the candlestick formation right there. Whereas we're just moving into um, oversold territory there on the RSI and the slow stochastic. So um, we've not had that signal to buy yet, um, but uh, there is undoubtedly a technical signal there saying that things are perhaps slightly overdone. So uh, it's worth bearing that in mind. There is a, a fair amount of economic data due out today where we have uh, retail sales, CPI, employment data, and the uh, Philly Fed um, results out at 3 p.m. UK time. So moving on to Japan 225, we've just broken through potential support. That's obviously getting a lot of yen buying at the expense of the US dollar. Dollar yen is back down to 122, and that was that drop from 124 and changed. So um, that yen strength, also safe haven asset, especially with Greece the way that it is just now, things still looking quite terminalist there. Broken below potential support and that 55 period SMA. Any move below that opens up a potential move towards 19,043, with a longer term potential support at 18,648. But the dollar yen exchange rate will be very important for the future direction of Japan 225. Moving on to dollar yen, uh, we have a graveyard doji formation just below potential resistance, broken below 21 period SMA, looking at 121.87 as the next potential support level. And um, certainly with that major piece of fundamentals around the FOMC and the lower trajectory of future US rate hikes, that is going to impact the strength of the dollar. To be honest, that is exactly what they want to happen just now because they don't want the dollar to gain rampant strength. Um, looking at West Texas crude, uh, we're seeing a consolidation around 59.50. Uh, quite, a, you know, we've got a, another doji spinning top style formation right here with a slow grind down. Uh, things are looking a little bit better yesterday, but we'll push, push right that, back down by the end of the session. And remember, the dollar has lost a little bit of strength. That's the, that's probably mainly due, that sell-off is probably mainly due to the uh, downward revised forecasts that the FOMC had for the US economy. Now, looking at gold, uh, gold net positive on the back of that result, obviously sensitive to interest rates, but if they're going to raise rates at a slower pace, then that could be okay for gold in the future. And obviously the dollars come off, so that's helped push gold up that little bit higher as well. Moving on to euro dollar, uh, euro dollar coming close to potential resistance around about the tips of these candles are 113.88 um, with the next potential support at 1 spot 11 still in play. Technicals are heading into overbought territory, not quite there yet, so there's still a little bit of room for maneuver. But Greece is a big wild card right there, looking increasingly likely that no deal is going to be reached. Uh, and the sterling, um, great data coming out of the UK. It might even look that the sterling might end up, uh, the UK, sorry, might end up raising rates sooner than people had expected. And that's why you're seeing this massive increase in, uh, in, in sterling versus the US dollar, because obviously you've got a flip-flop off um, of positions there, and you know, the US dollar was all about oh, they're going to be raising rates first, they're going to be raising rates at a faster pace. And now it's like, yeah, they might raise rates first, but they're going to take their time. And um, you can see the candle that we had there yesterday breaking 
above the historic potential support at the top end of May there. And we're still above it just now with one spot 59 as the next potential resistance. And the breakout above that opened up 162. So that's, we already talked about the macro data events for today. Quite a number of updates. Obviously, UK retail sales will be useful for cable traders. Add more fuel to that higher interest rate uh, discussion in the UK, which is the, seems to be the first time that's actually been mentioned for a number of months. But um, that is what some commentators are talking about. And uh, if we fast forward to Friday, you've got German PPI, public finance data. And then if you fast forward on to Monday next week, you've got uh, CCI for the Eurozone and existing home sales for the US. As ever, look at Michael Houston's analysis that he's done there on major FX pairs. Insights here is your inside track from our global analyst team. And join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next.